Hey, Flag fans! I'm Gray, and welcome back to Flag Facts. Today's show is all about the flag of America's friendly northern neighbor, Canada. The Canadian flag is one of the most well-known flags in the world. But where did it come from? Well, the story starts with its iconic maple leaf. The maple tree, with its vibrant fall colors, can be found all across landscapes in eastern Canada. By the 19th century, the maple leaf itself had grown into a popular symbol of Canadian national identity and could be found on just about everything, from newspapers and books to coins and badges, military uniforms and sports jerseys, and perhaps, most importantly, official government symbols. In 1868, the maple leaf was included on the shields of the coats of arms of both Quebec and Ontario. These shields then went on to appear on the Canadian Red Ensign. While a unique Canadian flag was not officially adopted when the Dominion of Canada was established in July of 1867, the Canadian Red Ensign soon emerged as a de facto national symbol. The design simply incorporated elements of the Canadian coat of arms onto the familiar British Red Ensign. The design was periodically updated as new provinces joined the Confederation and when a new coat of arms was adopted in 1921. The final version of the flag appeared in 1957, when the maple leaves at the bottom of the shield changed from green to red. The flag was used until 1965, when it was officially replaced by the Canadian flag we know today, though getting there was not an easy task. In 1960, then leader of the opposition, Lester B. Pearson, declared that it was time to solve what he called the flag problem. But he was far from the first to call for a new national flag. In fact, parliamentary committees had been created in 1925 and 1946, but both attempts failed, as some worried that the issue might lead to political instability. Following World War II, public opinion grew in favor of a new national flag, as many felt that Canada needed a unique symbol of its own, distinct of its colonial past. And for Pearson, the issue was personal. In 1956, British, French, and Israeli forces invaded Egypt in an attempt to seize control of the Suez Canal, which had recently been nationalized by the Egyptian government. The canal had previously been owned by the Suez Canal Company, which was essentially a front for British and French interests. The short-lived conflict came to be known as the Suez Crisis and was resolved with the help of the United Nations. Pearson played a significant role in the UN peacekeeping effort and was even awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for his efforts. During the crisis, Canadian forces were identified with the Canadian Red Ensign, but many Egyptians objected to their presence as they associated the Union Jack featured on the design with the British, who, as you'll remember, were currently invading their country. This experience left an impression on Pearson and led him to push for a new national flag. In 1963, as luck would have it, Pearson was elected Prime Minister and promised to deliver a new national flag in time for Canada's centennial celebrations in 1967. Pearson soon proposed this design, created with the help of artist and heraldic expert Alan Beddoe, which went on to be known as the Pearson Pennant. Pearson recommended the design to Parliament in 1964, but his proposal was met with strong opposition, which began a period known as the Great Flag Debate. And the debate was not limited to just Parliament, many in the general public had strong opinions as well. Many submitted design ideas of their own, while others protested the idea of a new national flag altogether. The opposition, led by John Diefenbaker, felt that the national flag should honor Canada's founding races and feature the Union Jack. However, that did not sit well with the large French-Canadian population, and it pretty much completely brushed aside the indigenous population. Prime Minister Pearson instead insisted that the new design should look to the future and represent all of Canada, without conveying association with its colonial past. A new, all-party committee was soon created and given six weeks to submit a recommendation for a new design. Over the course of the next several weeks, the committee held 35 meetings and reviewed thousands of submissions. Some 2,000 suggestions were submitted in 1964, and an additional 3,900 from the 1946 Parliamentary Flag Committee were considered as well. After many long weeks of review and debate, the committee narrowed down their focus to just three designs. The Pearson pennant, this design with a single red maple leaf, and an identical design that added nods to Canada's British and French heritage with the inclusion of the Union Jack and a historic royal banner of France. Luckily, the third design was crossed off the list, and the final vote came down to the Pearson pennant and the plain single-leaf design. 
When it came time to vote, the conservatives on the committee believed that the liberals would all vote for the Pearson pennant, so they voted for the single leaf design. However, the liberal committee members surprisingly voted against the prime minister's preferred design, and they too all voted for the single leaf design, resulting in an unexpected, unanimous decision. The design was created by the Dean of Arts at the Royal Military College in Kingston, a man named George Stanley, and was inspired by the flag of the Royal Military College. The design itself consists of a red field with a white square at its center. The white square occupies half the width of the banner, and the red stripes on each side are exactly half the size of the square, creating a design that has come to be known as the Canadian Pale. Finally, in the center of the square sits a large red maple leaf with 13 points, which was later changed to a leaf with just 11 points. The design then made its way to Parliament, and after six weeks of debate and over 300 speeches, it was approved by both the House and the Senate. On January 28, 1965, Queen Elizabeth II signed a royal proclamation declaring Canada's new flag. Finally, on February 15, 1965, the Canadian Red Ensign was taken down and the new national flag of Canada was officially raised at Parliament Hill. Today, the flag is well known all around the world and is celebrated in Canada every February 15th on National Flag of Canada Day. And there you go, that's everything you need to know about the Canadian flag. So what'd you think? Is it a good design? Do you prefer the Pearson pennant? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're down there, be sure to like and subscribe for more flag-related content just like this. Want to learn more about the messy history of another flag? Check out our other video on the official state flag of Georgia here. If you're in the market for a Canadian flag, or any other flag, head on over to flagandbanner.com for all your flag flying needs. And as always, thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time on Flag Facts.